All right, so the next one we're going to have is going to be on Chapter 10 involving statistics and probability and also dealing with permutations and combinations. So the first one is a drawer that contains 10 blue pencils, 8 red. You randomly select 3 pencils from the drawer. What is the probability you'll select a blue, a red, then a blue if you replace each time? So that replacement is important. So 10 out of the 18 are blue, you put it back in, and then the next one is 8 out of 18 are red, and then the next one you put it back in, 10 out of 18. Fractional work here, multiplying straight across, 5,832, which reduces to 100 over 729. Next one, now let's say you do not replace, you don't put it back in. We're trying to get a red and a black. There's seven red marbles and 12 black marbles. So the total is seven out of the 19 are red times 12 out of the 18 because you didn't put the, the marble back in. So 84 out of 342, which is 14 57. Now we're going to talk about, uh, you do a survey of parents and coaches of high school students and whether the competitive sports are important. Finish the two-way table. So writing out the information in the two-way table. So we have 880 said yes out of the 1,336 total. So you're talking about 456 here. 45, you can do this in any order. So there I added that way. This makes this 1,000 going across. Then going up, you get 120, and then going across, you get 165. And again, this can be kind of in any order. And then they're going to ask you a question. What is the probability that you randomly select a person from the survey, so the total number of people, is a parent that feels that competitive sports is important? So we're talking about 880 out of the total survey. So 880 out of 1501, if you wanted to write that as a percent, 880 out of 1501, you would get 58.6%. A meteorologist states that the probability that it will rain is 55%, the probability that it will rain tomorrow is 45%, and the probability that it will rain both days is 35%. What is the probability that it will rain today or tomorrow? So again, you got probability of one, probability of the other, and the probability of both. So that is an overlapping situation. So 55% plus 45% minus the 35 overlapping percent gets you a grand total of 65%. So anytime you have an or situation in which it's in both categories, you must subtract it so that you don't count it, you don't count it twice. If 400 students at a school, 12 play volleyball, 18 play softball, and 6 play both, same situation as last time. You got 12 out of the 400 students playing volleyball plus 18 out of the 400 students playing softball, but you got to subtract the 6 because they're being counted in both categories. So you end up getting 24 out of 400, which reduces to 3 out of 50. You wake up each morning and walk to the closet and decide what to wear. You have 10 shirts, 5 pants to choose from. You pick one shirt, one pair of pants, and decide whether to wear shoes or flip-flops. How many different outfits do you have? Well, you walk to the store, you have 10 times the number of pants times the flip-flops or shoes for a grand total of 100 outfits. You are picking a password that requires four letters followed by three numbers. If you, can repeat, if you can repeat any letters or numbers, how many possible passwords can be made? So again, this is the first question here. If you have 26 times 26 times 26 times 26, or if you want to write that as 26 to the fourth power, times there's 10 numbers, or times 10 to the third power, for a grand total of... 456,976,000 passwords. Now, what happens if you can't repeat numbers? Things get a lot more interesting now. So here we go. 26 times 25 times 24 times 23 times 10 times 9 times 8. Again, because you can't repeat it, once you have one letter, then the next one you can't have that letter. 
And so this makes a lot less now, 258,336,000 passwords. Permutation formulas. Okay, let's start with P. Permutation formula will be given to you. And then a combination formula, which will also be given to you. So the first one is uh, 7, permutation of 3. So using the formula over there, you're talking about 3 as your n. Um, so we got, sorry, 7 factorial over 7 minus 3 factorial, which gets you 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial over 4 factorial. And so 7 times 6 times 5 is 210. Next one, using the combination formula, so 11 factorial over 4 factorial, and then 11 minus 4 factorial, 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. I'll stop right there. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and this is just 7 factorial, so those two cancel. Um, 4 times 2 is 8, so that cancels there. 3 cancels into 9, so now using my calculator, 11 times 10 times 3 times 7, I'm sorry, excuse me, 11 times 10 times 3 is 330. The school has decided to make a committee to talk about the technology in the classroom. There are 30 teachers that signed up to be on the committee, but there's only room for six teachers. So this is a combination because the order makes no difference. So a combination of 30 teachers choosing six. Um, I'm not going to go through all my work then. It's You can use a calculator for that one and use the formula for that one, but 30 choosing six. There are 13 runners at a cross-country meet. In how many ways can the runners finish first, second, and third? So now we're talking about a permutation, 13, three places. So there's three positions that you have to worry about. And again, using the formula or just using a calculator, you get 1,716. In how many ways can you arrange the letters math? Now, if there's no repeating letters, it's merely taking the number of letters factorial. So there are 24 different ways to actually arrange the letters math. Now, science, there are repeating letters. So the formula for that is the number of letters divided by the number of repeating letters. So there's two E's, so that's two factorial. There are two C's, another two factorial. So the number of different ways you can arrange the letters here is 1,260. There are 17 players on a high school baseball team, eight juniors, nine seniors. The team likes to, uh, like to create a five-player group to represent the team at a local fundraiser. What is the probability of choosing three juniors and two seniors? So again, now you're talking about success out of total. Anytime you're talking about the probability of something happening, success goes on top, uh, total goes on the bottom. So here we go. Success for us is if we had eight juniors, and we're going to get three of them, times nine seniors, and we're going to get two of them. So there's the success part. Over out of the 17 total players, we want to get five of them. So now, using the calculator for the top, using the calculator for the bottom, I get 2,016, 6,188, which reduces the 17 over 221. Last one, formula. Again, you will be given this formula. So now we're talking about a, a situation. Here's the formula that you would be given. So that's what the formula will look like on the formula sheet. In 2016-17, DeAndre Jordan led the league in field goal percentage at 70.2. So that's the percentage of him actually making a basket. During a game, what is the probability that and on DeAndre will make 8 out of 11. Okay, exactly. So now, out of the 11, we want him to make 8. So this is the percent. This is the percent of 
excuse me, this is the percent that it would actually occur. This is the success. So 70.2% written as a decimal raised to the eighth power. And then failure raised to the third power. Those are the total times we want. We want three misses. We want eight makes. And so now putting that into your calculator, you're going to end up getting 25.8% because you're going to get 0.258 written as a percent because it asks for round your answer to the nearest percent. So that concludes chapter 10. So we'll stop right there um, and we'll come back and get to chapter 11 here in just a little bit. If you have any questions, make sure to talk to Mr. Bone or Mr. Smith and they'll be happy to answer them.